What's up guys, Nathan here. Since I started playing Path of Exile, I've tried out a number of builds. From Flame Golem Necromancers to Wild Strike Berserkers to Power Siphon Deadeyes, I've seen it all. However, my favorite build for the longest time was the tried and true Essence Strain Trickster. Something about pressing two buttons, then watching every enemy within three screens melt is so satisfying. Sure, the damage isn't extremely high, but I love it all the same. The reason why I tell this story is because, of all the builds I've played, I've never been able to replicate that awesome feeling I get from Essence Strain. Until now. As the title of this video suggests, I chose to League Start Delve as a Caustic Arrow, Toxic Rain Trickster, and holy shit has it been a blast. Casual guides for casual players of Path of Exile. But Path of Exile guides... Quick shout out to my boy Tarky for the inspiration to do this build. In fact, my tree is nearly identical to his, except he went Pathfinder. I highly recommend you check out his channel and stream, and you can actually learn a lot if you manage to look past the memes. Whoopie dee scoop whoop poop. Poop doo dee whoop scoop. Poop. Poop. Speaking of learning, it's about time I started talking about this build. As you might have guessed from the intro, the playstyle revolves around using two skills together. Caustic Arrow and Toxic Rain. We start by firing Toxic Rain a few times to apply Wither, Slow, and build Poison stacks for our Herald of Agony, then finish off any enemies left with a strong Caustic Arrow. For single target, your strategy is basically the same, but you also need to cast Vol Blight and Kite with Flame Dash. When it's all said and done, the build has an extremely active playstyle that takes some getting used to, but ends up feeling so much more rewarding than just being another Sunder Boy. <laughs> So, before I get too deep into the nitty gritty of what makes this build tick, let's take a quick look at its general pros and cons. Pros. Engaging, active playstyle. Fast mapping with little investment. Cheap to get started. SSF viable. And an inherently safe playstyle thanks to being ranged and having a lot of slows. Cons. Not for lazy players. Expensive to fully complete the build. Questionable single target due to how the poison ground from Caustic Era works. So, if you're still interested, let's take a look at the skill tree. This is just a quick overview of the decisions I made compared to Tarki's original tree, and the path of building pastebin will be linked in the description below. Here's a general look at the tree. Like I said, this is very similar to Tarki's build, but we're obviously starting at the Shadow area instead of the Ranger one. I chose to go Trickster over Pathfinder because it's a little more DPS, and because I wanted to drop all the mana and flask effectiveness nodes from Tarki's tree. The beginning of the tree is pretty much what you'd expect. Start with the increased chaos damage, grab all the nice notables, and put a single spreading rot jewel here to make your Vol Blight as much of a DPS increase as possible. Then, make your way down the right side of the tree. I made the weird decision to grab piercing shots here to make clearing with Caustic Arrow a little more reliable, but you could probably get away with just a projectiles pierce an additional target quiver. Moving on, phase acrobatics, the bow damage wheel, and the herbalism life nodes are all no-brainers. Next, I would prioritize going up to Heart of Oak, then left to fill in the duelist section of the tree, and finally grabbing the Scion Life Wheel as you're first getting into maps. The last levels you get should just be filling in some of the life and jewel slots, and you can expect to have at least 6,000 life by the time you hit level 95. For the Ascendancy, I recommend the following order. First, go Patient Reaper, then Weave the Arcane, then Prolonged Pain, and lastly Swift Killer. Getting Weave the Arcane is actually a pretty pivotal point in the build, as you should be able to stop running Clarity and start running Despair at that time. Next up, let's take a look at the recommended gem setups for this build. I should mention though, the following are kind of a work in progress, mainly because I'm not exactly sure how to optimize everything, especially Herald of Agony. However, if I decide to change the gems for this build as I play it more and get a better sense of what works and what doesn't, I'll be sure to update the path of building pace bin accordingly. Your first setup is Caustic Arrow, Swift Affliction, Void Manipulation, Vicious Projectiles, Damage on Full Life, and Empower. Keep in mind, the best way to gain DPS for this build is to increase the level of these gems, so keep your eye out for a level 21 Caustic Arrow and a level 4 Empower. 
Next is Toxic Rain, Withering Touch, Poison, Mirage Archer, Greater Multiple Projectiles, and Increased Duration. Keep in mind, this setup deals very little damage on its own and is meant purely to synergize with your Caustic Arrow. The next setup is Vol Blight, Increased Duration, Increased Area of Effect, and Phase Run. The first three gems are there to provide a huge single target DPS boost, and Phase Run is just an awesome quality of life skill to have with the recent changes to instant cast spells. Next up, we have Despair, Blasphemy, Flame Dash, and Faster Casting. Despair is of course a massive DPS gain, and Flame Dash is important to have to close gaps and avoid dangerous boss abilities. The last setup in this build is Herald of Agony, Greater Multiple Projectiles, Vicious Projectiles, and Minion Damage. Because Path of Building doesn't show your spider's DPS, I have no idea if these are the optimal supports for Herald of Agony, but I'm sure they're fine. Just remember you won't have enough mana to run any supports at all until you get your Impressence Amulet, so just adjust this setup as necessary. One last note about these gems. While leveling, I found that I needed to use Clarity for most of the early to mid game. If you have better flask efficiency than me, you could probably get away with just using a mana flask, but I'm lazy and bad. I chose to run Clarity and Herald of Agony up until getting my Weave the Arcane Ascendancy node, then I switched Clarity for Despair and never looked back. Now for the exciting part, the gear. Since Tarki planned this build for SSF, it should come as no surprise that this build uses absolutely no expensive or difficult to obtain uniques at all. So, I'll be organizing the following section of my guide into three categories. Required, Recommended, and Luxury. Just know that this build can be done completely with rares, and the best DPS boost you can get is a higher level Caustic Arrow. Required. Rares with Life and Resists, and one Spreading Rock Cobalt Jewel. Above all else, focus on capping your resists and getting as much flat life on your gear as possible. The only reason why this jewel is listed as required is because you can get it for free as a reward for the quest Death to Purity in Act 5, so there is literally no reason not to use it. Recommended A Silver Bow, Unique Bow, and the Chaos Variant of the Impressence Amulet. The former is probably the best bow you can use until you get your hands on a plus 3 crafted bow, and the latter is a nice DPS boost that allows you to run more supports on and reserve more mana with your Herald of Agony. Impressants can be fairly expensive though, so I would either farm it yourself by killing Red Elder, or just be satisfied with a rare high life amulet until you have more currency than you know what to do with. Luxury in his original build, Tarki uses Devoto's Devotion, Queen of the Forest, and its series Step. I think all of these are valuable, if not unnecessary, additions. Devoto's and Queen of the Forest will of course make you extremely fast, and its series Step is a fantastic boost in survivability with the added spell dodge. One more thing I should touch on is your flasks. You can really run whatever you want here, but I do recommend a few specifics. Be sure you have Bleed, Freeze, and Curse Removal, especially if you're playing Hardcore. Additionally, if you're using Queen of the Forest, make sure you're using both a Stib Knight and Jade Flask for the extra movement speed. So that about does it for this build guide. I usually never play bow characters, so this was an awesome change of pace for me. The safe play style, fast movement, and damage over time mechanics made me fall in love with Caustic Arrow, and I'm glad GGG decided to finally make this skill viable again. If you're looking for something to league start delve or even the next expansion with, look no further. Thanks, this has been Nathan, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you! Now comes the part where I get to give a special shout out to Real Human. Thanks, Real Human, for supporting me on Patreon. And honestly, I'm glad it's just Real Human because it would be it would just be a lot of work to say a lot of names right now. You know, that would just be tiring. I'd, I'd have to go get some water, and gosh, I'd just have to go take a nap after this. So, so honestly, I'm glad. I just have one person to thank. I can just I can just relax now. So, so thank you, Real Human. Have a good one, guys. Please check out my Patreon.